Hey guys, welcome to the Painting Business Pro Show. I'm Eric Barstow, I'm the founder of Painting Business Pro, and today I have Ryan Kushel joining the show, and I'm excited to share his story with you. Ryan uh, has been running his business for four or five years now, and before that, he worked at Sherwin-Williams. He has about 10, 15 years of background in painting. He really always wanted to start his painting business, and then he did, and since he started his business, he's just been growing a really healthy, profitable business that has given him an amazing lifestyle. And so what I love about Ryan is that he has created this business to be a lifestyle business from basically the beginning. So he takes three months off a year. He takes time off whenever he wants. He totally runs and owns his schedule. And he's created a lot of freedom in his life without building a giant business. And so I love that he's got the focus on that. I want to share a story with you because I think most people start a business because they want freedom. And Ryan is a great example of how to create a business that gives you freedom from the beginning, and then you can grow from there. So hope you enjoy this episode and uh, let's dive right in. This is the Painting Business Pro Show, where we share inspiring stories from people who are just like you, who have created extraordinary results in their business and their life. We'll take the mystery out of it and show you behind the scenes exactly how these results happen. There's a simple process and a roadmap to follow to create life-changing success in business. You are capable of more than you realize. So listen in, discover what's possible, and let's unlock your potential. Let's go. What's up, guys? Today, I've got Ryan on the Penny Business Pro Show, and I still don't know how to say your last name, so I'm not going to try. <laughs> what is it? Kushel. 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 Kushel or Kushel. We, we do the, the you, Kushel. Kushel or Kushel. Uh, Ryan's a, a great, a, a great human being, uh, a, a great painting contractor, a friend. He's been, you know, at several of our events over the years. So I've known him a long time. And I think you're going to really appreciate just hearing his story. I think there's a lot of people who relate to Ryan's story um, and, and just the business that he's created. So um, we're going to just jump right into that. And I hope you enjoy it. So Ryan, uh, thank you for doing this. You're welcome. Thanks for having me. Yep. And Ryan and I were talking before the show, this, this whole podcast and show is actually like partly, uh, Ryan's idea. Uh, and Brian, like a couple years ago was like, you know, it'd be really cool for a podcast is to share people's stories. And so, uh, good to have you here to do it. Yeah. I think it's inspiring for a lot of people. Just, it was always inspiring for me to listen to people on podcasts. And so here we are. Yeah, man. So I wanted to start, uh, I want to start with just giving you a chance to share, because I actually don't even know all of the details on your business as it is today. I know that it's growing. I know that things are going good, but what, why don't you start by just sharing what you're most proud of, like the state of the business these days, your lifestyle, like what do you really love about your business now that you'd love to, to give away to other people? I like the, I like what it's provided me, um, as far as freedom of time and, um, lifestyle yeah I, I you know I, I have more control in my life I have the ability to to you know basically say hey I'm not going to work tomorrow because I've got something that is important to me and uh, rearrange my schedule to continue to, to reach my goals right whereas if I was an employee I can't necessarily do that the same way I don't have the, the power to do that um, it's a little bit more difficult and um so when, when I'm an entrepreneur, I can, I can rearrange things and still be able to achieve my goals. It gives me, it gives me a lot of freedom in that way. Um, lifestyle wise, it's like, you know, before I started my painting company, um, I, I, you're kind of handcuffed to the company that you're working with. Um, now that I've got a painting company, I, well, first off, I, I have more time so I can take more, more time off. Um, I don't have to work weekends anymore. I used to work short and Williams and I have to work weekends last year. I'll give you an example. So like last year I worked diligently through the summer and, you know, met my goals and was able to make my money and make my customers happy and make my vendors happy and just create relations, all that kind of stuff. But I was able to take many months off during the summer um, and enjoy a road trip. I came down to visit you guys for an event you know, and even when I got back, I had a lot of time off. And so it afforded me a lot of time to to grow as a person personally and professionally. So like with all that time off came a lot of like studying and learning and like trying to grow as a person, become more efficient, that kind of stuff. So that's what's really exciting about this 
is having this free time during my downtime to learn more and then become more productive as a person, you know, more valuable as a person. To other How many months time. off is many months off? Well, in November was your event and um, I wrapped up my, my, like all my exteriors um, beginning in November and, you know, kind of got ready for your event. I drove out there with my RV that I had purchased from my profits that I had earned. Um, not a, not an overall expensive RV, but you know, it's, it's, you know, it's an RV and it, it works and it's fun and whatever. So I drove out there. I like to camp, all that kind of stuff. But um, we had our event that week. And then after that, I, I drove down to Texas. I went to um, New Orleans. Um, and then I went to Pensacola. I had, I, I used to be in the service down in Pensacola and I went and visited my old base down there and dipped my feet in water. And, um, and then I went to Jacksonville, Florida. And then um, I went up to Savannah. And then I went and visited a, a friend in Charleston and stayed there for, um, you know, four days, five days or whatever. And then after I was done visiting him, I went and cruised up through the Appalachian Mountains, camped around in there. Then I visited a friend in Chicago and hung out there for a few days, plugged in the, the outside of his house um, in zero degree weather in my RV with a, a heater plugged in. It was cool. Um, and kind of bummed around Chicago a little bit. And then I made my way up to Minnesota. And then when I got up to Minnesota, I still had time off. And so I kind of started dabbling into learning again and, and, and you know, figuring out what I wanted to learn through that winter of my slow times. Meanwhile, I took, I took, you know, certain jobs that would come in on, but I wasn't like, you know, I wasn't busy with business, right? It's just byproduct of, of, you know, going after exteriors is you'll get interiors during the summer or during the winter, excuse me. And so I'll take those on if they make sense. If they don't, I won't, right? Um, my real focus during the, the winter months is not to make money, but to learn. Um, because I just, based on what I see on my numbers, I'm not, I, I don't make as much enough, uh, money during the winter to really make it, um, a focus. Right. So I think it's yeah. more valuable for me to focus on learning during the winter. Um, but how many months I did was like November, December, January, and then February, I probably started kind of hitting the ground with like sales stuff. Right. So All right. Not a good bad. three months, a good three months. Yeah, three months, three months total. Up. I, look, that's that's how I used to do it too. It was, it was like, hey, it's it's harder to make money in the winter months. It's easier in the summer months. So how about I just make the easier money, and enjoy those off months? Um, yeah. That's awesome. I didn't know you did all that uh, this winter. That's pretty killer. Yeah, I had a great time, and I did it the last winter as well. The, the winter before that. Well, and I know you've got because you're you're not able to come to this next event because you're going somewhere else. So you got you have a fishing trip, or is that what it was? Yeah. So every year, third weekend in May, uh, me and my buddies go on a fishing trip up to Voyager National Park, which I've got a family cabin that's on Crane Lake, just outside of Voyager National Park. Um, you know, like half that lake's part of Voyager National Park, and it's just a, a, like it's the most beautiful place for me in the nation. But in Minnesota, um, it's it's awesome. You know, the best place that that I know. Of. Um, so we go up there, we, we fish every year, catch a lot of fish, drink a lot of beer, have a, have a good time. Um, it's just, we just kind of like set everything aside and just enjoy ourselves. It's awesome. So, awesome. so, and then just, uh, just to cover it, what's the, what's the business look like? So how much revenue are you doing? How much are you earning, um, in the nine months that are flexible that you you're, you're working a year right now? Do you want me to start from when just I first started, uh, let's, you could or say you want me to do year, just this year. You just say, what did you do in 2023, and what are you what are you tracking for in 2024? So in 2020, well, it's interesting. It's you know, I had I had some setbacks last year um, with some loss in personal life. Right, I had a lot of friends that I lost, um, yeah. and so I actually I actually went back this this last year, but. What was interesting is that my profits went up because I managed my business better. Um, so let's let's give you just from start, right? From start, it was me as a painter. Um, in 2020, I, right? You started in 2020? 2020, right? Yeah. So I quit Sherwin-Williams. I was in store management in Sherwin-Williams. Um, quit Sherwin-Williams and decided to come to this side because I saw a lot of opportunity. Didn't like the corporate side of things. and I, I linked up with 
with you as a business coach, right? And that year, I still just had a lot of limiting beliefs, and I still do to this day, right? But that year, I I couldn't let go of the brush. I kept painting, and I had you know a, a painter to help me produce like half my jobs, right? So um, that year, I think I did like 150 in revenue. I think I made 65k in profit. The next year, I took your advice and decided to to completely give up painting. If I can't run this business from the business side and and I'm painting, then I'm I'm not going to do it. I took that mindset, right? And um, that year I did 375 in revenue and I made 90K in net profit, right. you know, owner discretionary revenue. And then, um, and then the next year I did 546,000 uh, in revenue yeah. and I jumped up to, a hundred and thirty k, like one one twenty nine or something like that, net yeah. profit. And then the next year, which was last year, I yeah. did five twenty six in revenue. So I went down in overall revenue, but I jumped up to one thirty five in my net profits. So that was that was a good sign. Yeah. And one of the things that I said when I was getting into this was, I was like, okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna take a five. Like I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna commit to this for five years. I'm gonna go all in, no matter what. I'm gonna do whatever I can to make this work. And as long as I'm hitting my goals each year, and by the end of that five years, I'm gonna continue to do it, right? And my goal was that I wanted to make over a hundred grand in profits for myself. And so I was able to achieve. Once that second year came and I made ninety grand in profits, I was like, oh, I can do this, yeah. you know. And then that third year came and I was able to achieve that. And then I was like, cool, I'm doing it again. And then last year I did it again. And so now it just builds confidence and it, it, you know, that's what I was looking for. And it makes, makes my life easier. I'm able to do a lot more for people, you know, so that, that makes me feel valuable. What do you, where do you see yourself going this year and even the next couple of years? Like how have your goals changed? Um, well, the more money you make, the, the more you want to make, right? Um, but I really think that like having a business, like gives me the ability to like do more for, for the community. And that's kind of like my desire that really makes me feel good. Like I feel good having a business that, that can serve, you know, like if I had employees that can serve my employees, well, in this case, I've got subcontractors and it serves my subcontractors. And what I hear from my subcontractors are good things. They like me as a manager. They feel really good about my organization and they just like, they like working for me. Right. And so that makes me feel valuable. But also what I hear from them is that they've like, I, I had some, some subcontractors that came from the new construction side of things, which is the high production home builds. Right. And so they were being subcontracted out by GCs, general contractors. Yeah. Well, they're just pitching them for money. Right. And you know, we've got this set up to where we're we're trying to create value in our sales process. Not only that, but like in our production process as well, we're trying to deliver that value. And so we're able to charge more. And um, so the guys are making more money. And that's what that, that's what I'm hearing about them from my subcontractors is they're making more money than they would be if they're doing high production homes on new construction, working yeah. for GCs or, or this other stuff. Right. And so now they're saying, you know, and what happens is, is they're they're spreading the word to other contractors. So I literally have people calling me all the time, asking me to paint. I never, ever advertise for painters. They just come to me because of that. Um, and so, you know, I'll, I'll take advantage of that and I'll do interviews periodically, you know, once every two weeks, you know, a couple of months, whatever it is, so that I can continue to create relationships with subcontractors. Not that I can keep them all busy, but I can at least strike up a conversation and share with them what my business is doing, what our values are. Share them, you know, my systems and how I operate and how I give them jobs and how I manage the jobs, all that kind of stuff. That gives them a little bit of like, you know, insight on how what what's possible. They get excited and they they want to work for me, right? And so now that makes me more eager to go out and find more work to serve more of my painters, you know, in their lives, like because they need it, they want it, right? So it's just one more motivating factor. Well, just what your goals are. Where do you see this going? I mean, even this year, what are you training for? I know you're in the pro. I, I think you're in the process of hiring a project production manager. Um, your marketing is growing, which I know is one of your concerns. So yeah, just curious kind of where you see this going 
going next? So I want it to continue to grow because I've noticed after last year, you know, when I was doing 546 the year before, and then I, I went down to 526, mm -hmm. I was kind of bummed, right? But I, then I was happy that my net profits went up. But there's something about it. Like if you, if you stop growing, you kind of get stagnant, you kind of get bored. And, and I don't want to get bored. Part of my values in my business is to continuously learn. And by continuously learning, like if you go to my business page, what does it say here? It says a strong, I get that one down. A strong commitment to continuous improvement. We will never get bored. Right. And so that's the same, same principle. Like I, I feel like if I'm not improving, I'm going to get bored. I get bored. And so I want to yeah. just continue to stay, you know, um, interested in what I'm doing. But I, I, again, back to like how I feel. It's like when I'm creating value for people, for my community, um, for my vendors that I work with in my business, um, just for all the people that my community or my, my business touches, uh, it makes me feel good and inspires me and it inspires other people. And I think it's just, it's just what kind of drives me. So that's, that's what I want. And so I want to continue to grow. Right. But I do have limiting beliefs and, and fears that, that are hindered to me growing that I have to figure out how to get over. Right. And so that's part of why I'm committed to, to coaching um, and learning and, and all that kind of stuff, because um, you know, the, that, that's the stuff that's, that's opening my eyes to figure it out and figure out how I can like get over those fears and um, living beliefs and all that kind of stuff. And part of, part of the limiting beliefs is, is like that, that, that hire for um, hiring a project manager. Like, am I a good enough manager? Can I do this? Um, can I handle the stress? You know, all that kind of stuff. <laughs> so. It'll be less stressful. <laughs> that's, that's, that's why I need you, man. Cause I, you know, I, I think you're right, you know, can but I, I haven't been able to successfully do it yet. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, um, you, you'll, yeah, you'll rock that. So I'm curious, John, before we, before we got on, you know, I was sharing with you about, your your business and that what you've created w inspires a lot of people because not not everybody wants everyone wants different things and and you said something like yeah I hear that a lot you know from people around me like what what is it that you feel like you've got with your business that people want like what what is it you know get bring us into that world a little bit I'm just I'm really just curious like what do you hear from people and what do you what do they see what do you see like because I want the pe so people listening to this to see that business doesn't have to be just huge, you know, multi-million, big, fast, high growth. Like it, it doesn't have to be that because I the way I view you and your business is that you've been really intentional about how you've created it, how you've created your lifestyle. You've kind of done it the way you want to do it. And you're still growing a really good, healthy business quickly. Like, what is it that you love about your business and other people around you see about your business that, like, what's, uh, I'm not quite sure how to ask it, but do you get what I'm getting at? Yeah. yeah. Um, well, what I've noticed that other people see is, you know, I have just random people being like, they make comments like, well, I, you know, I'll give you an example. Like, I, I've got a, a, a a friend who he's in the um, like auto industry where they auto body industry. Right. And he's doing, doing a good job and he's successful in that. And he's got some partners and they're, um, they're building, like, I don't know if they're building franchises or what, but they're, they're, they're building multiple locations and they're doing well. They partnered up and they figured it out. Right. And we were having a conversation with some, some other um, individuals um, that run, companies but they don't they don't operate the right way they're not compliant they're running everything cash they're probably doing what i was doing that first year you know running one hundred fifty thousand dollars and making 65k or whatever it is right and we were just having a conversation about that and those are the people that are coming to me saying you know i i kind of wish i was able to do that do what you're doing right like they're they they don't quite see what's possible yet and so they, they are seeing what I'm starting to do over these last four years. And they're obviously inspired by it somehow. Um, so what they're seeing, what they're seeing is my growth personally and professionally. They're seeing my lifestyle slightly, you know, change slightly. You know, they're seeing 
me drive a, a different car. They're seeing me um, have time off. They're seeing my freedom, most importantly. Like, I think that that's what they're seeing is my freedom. I mean, today is my birthday, and I was like, you know what? I'm going to clear Happy my schedule. Today. Today. You didn't yeah, mention that, I, dude. I, Happy birthday. Thanks. I turned 43, <laughs> April 30th. <laughs> but I cleared my schedule. I'm like, you know what? Tomorrow's my birthday. I'm going to clear my schedule and just kind of have a chill day. I'll take what comes, but yeah. Um, that's what I'm doing today. I've got a, an appointment after this for, for an estimate. And um, that's really about it. I've, I've cleared my schedule. Now I'm going to get after it, you know, tomorrow and, and the remainder of the week. But that's what gives me power, right? I've got freedom. And that's what those people are seeing. And that's what they are asking me about is like, what are you doing? How are you doing it? Uh, I'm interested in what you're doing. And they then they give me comments about, they'll kind of give me backhanded comments sometimes. It's kind of one of those like, you're, you're, uh, not jealous, but you're, you're envious of what someone else has. And they'll be like, well, yeah, you and your big business, I don't even have a big business. It's, 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 it's half a million dollars, but it, it gives me good profits, right? Because I manage it correctly and I figured that out. And so that's, that's, what's interesting is like, they think I have this huge business based on how I market it based on how I run it and operate it, but it's not, it's not, it's just, you know, what I've, what I've learned from you and, and other people in the industry. Um, and it's possible to have a small business and still live a really good lifestyle if you really want. And I don't, I don't sit here and take my profits and go purchase like a big home or this or that or blah, blah, blah. I'm very frugal with my, my money. Part of that's because of my past. Um, but yeah, that's what they see. Dude. Uh, a couple of things, right? So one is I think it's, I think it's awesome. And I want to know more about what freedom looks like in your life besides three months, you know, three month road trip and some time off. Um, it, not for me, but for everybody listening, like, yeah, this is what it's about. But that is for me, you know, this, that's what it's about for me is it's not, it doesn't have to be big. The goal is freedom and you've, you can create a lot of freedom pretty fast and have a pretty incredible life. And it doesn't need to be this big, huge thing. And man, that's, that's a, it's a different business to build, you know, like that, that is it. That doesn't need to be the goal for everybody is, is big. Cause also I know, I know that your business is still growing. I mean, it's not like you're done. You know, you had like a little down year on revenue last year. I know this year is going to be up. I know you're going to earn more this year because you, it's boring to not keep growing and you know how. And so Anyways, I just, uh, that's what I love about your business and your story is that you have created a very elegant access to freedom. You know, it's simple. Like you've done this in a really chill way, um, which I think is, is rare because most people just struggle and struggle and struggle with their business um, or they're just never satisfied. And so they're struggling to get to the next level and then the next level and the next level. And you've been operating your business with freedom since you quit painting basically yeah i agree that's how i feel you know yeah, at least that. after that first year and right. once i completely set down the brush and it's 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 easier than people think it really is as long as you're fully committed and as long as you set your ego aside and you take help from other people you know, I, I used to be a cocky son of a bitch and I probably still am to be honest, but I, I work hard to try to be a, a, more humble, you know, because that's what, what allows me to, um, have growth, like learn and, and have growth. If, if I am a know-it-all, I'm not going to grow. Um, I, and I used to be that way for years and years and years back in the day. I, I used to paint, you know, once I got out of the Marine Corps, I used to paint. Um, and for 10 years, I, just tried to figure it out on my own because I thought I was better than everybody else at painting and blah, blah, blah. And the truth is, is like, there's better painters out, out there than me. There's better people who, who are, you know, know the business side of things than me. It's just, it's never ending. There always is someone better than you. In your twenties and early thirties, it's hard. I feel like that's just the trap. So many people fall in. I know my, I fell in that too, of like you, there's a point where you like think you know everything and like you're invincible and then you get humbled a little bit and I can see it you know, being in my late thirties now, looking back, you know, I'm 37 now and looking back to see how naive and arrogant I was. And then I can also see it in others where it's like, man, there's so much to learn. And humility is such a powerful trait to have. So we'll, we'll jump into that. Uh, some of the broken beliefs, Ryan, before we do that, 
what uh what does freedom look like so obviously one big part of it is i can plan to take multiple months months off um which is wild um you can just knock off you know take off a random tuesday because it's your birthday but you could do that on any tuesday so yeah what is it what does your schedule freedom flexibility lifestyle look like the rest of the year when you're not taking the three months off well i mean even during the busy season there's freedom like you know, if you have a breakdown mentally or, 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 you know, with maybe something in your family or whatever, and you're an entrepreneur and you're running a successful business, meaning, oh, maybe you're not huge, but you're managing it correctly. The freedom is, is like, I, right now I can't deal with my business. I've got to, I've got to take some time off, whether it's an hour during the day or it's the full day, you're able to, to you're able to rearrange your schedule communicate with the stakeholders and deal with the consequences and, and have that freedom to kind of get your mind right. Right. If your girlfriend breaks up to you, what do you, what do you do? I mean, sometimes you can trudge through it and work, 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 but maybe it's not the most healthiest thing. You know, um, last year I had a project manager die and, uh, you know, that was tough. Right. And so that's what I mean by freedom for me is, is like being able to, to have control over my time. And, you know, as a human being, we need that sometimes. You just can't keep pushing and pushing and pushing. You keep pushing, pushing and pushing. And before you know it, that's where, you know, everything breaks down, including your business. And then you're just, you, you, you give up, you know? So that's, that's what I mean by freedom. So if I followed you around for now, now what to, it's late April, right? April 30th. So if I just followed you around for the next few months during the business part of the year, where would I see you exercising that freedom? Is it like, eh, I don't feel like working tomorrow. I'm going to go fishing. Or is it, you know, that you have your, your schedule cut off. So you're just not working crazy hours or, you know, what would it, what would it look like during the busy season for you to exercise yeah. that freedom? So I'm not, I'm not going to sit here and be con- like spontaneous as a business owner. Right. I've got to I've got to make sure that I I I'm getting things done that need to be done. And so I've got to do that in, a, in an efficient manner. So. Um, what creates freedom is is the time management process that I've learned through you guys um, and, and how to focus on um, priorities within that time management system um, in different areas of my life. So, um, you know, I'm not going to just be like, oh, yeah, I'm going to go fishing, blah, blah, blah unless I block it out and I've got all my other areas blocked out to get actions, you know, you know, accomplished. Does that answer your question? Uh, sort of. I mean, I'm just curious, like, you know, if I'm your buddy and I'm like, dude, you've got all this freedom. I'm like, how do they know? Cause they see you doing what? Um, well, big, the big thing is, is during the winter time off, but, um, yeah. weekends are off. Um, if I want to go on a fishing trip, I can, Say, hey, I'm. We're leaving on Thursday. We're not leaving on Friday night after work. We're, I'm, you know, we're, we're driving five hours. I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna just take Saturday and Sunday. I'm gonna take Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday. And the way I've got my business set up is I can manage it from afar. So, you know, I use different technology so that I can communicate with my clients and my 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 subcontractors. I use job folders so that all my subcontractors know what's going on. But, you know, I can manage things from anywhere you know, if I want. And um, I delegate, uh, you know, responsibilities to my painters in the production process side of things so that that gives me more freedom, you know, and that's part of like why I want to hire a project manager or a project manager is so that I can create more freedom that way, which is now they're responsible for client issues and subcontractor issues and managing all those projects. So that's going to free up a ton of time. Mm -hmm. So that's what gives me the power to be able to take Thursday and Friday off and Saturday and Sunday and come back to work Monday, yep. that kind of stuff. Yeah. How often do you end up doing any work on a weekend? How often do I work on the yeah. weekend? Yeah. I mean, I'll work on the weekend if during the busy season, if the opportunity makes sense, but I've kind of committed over these last couple of years to not work on my weekends. Okay. So it's, it's rare. If I'm working on the weekends, it's maybe an hour or two of, Hey, you know, just communicating type stuff, right? Or maybe it's a maybe it's a, a conversation with someone who's interested in painting and the opportunity is there for me to close the deal. Yeah. Something like that, right? I'm not working on the a weekend. Phone call so. or something. Yeah. 
right? An email of this or that, but yeah. I, what I what I do now is I I try to set myself up so that my weekends are free, meaning get all the communication and all the things that need to be set up so that my guys can work the weekends and I don't have to because they want to work the weekends. So I'm like, okay, well let's let's make that happen, and so I just make sure that I set up everything the way it needs to be so that the customer knows what's going on. The painter knows what's going on and the painter knows what to do. If something goes wrong, he, he already knows that I'm out of town and he knows that he's the problem solver. Right. Yeah. So for him to communicate with me, all he's going to get is, well, I'm up North, man, got to figure it out. So he's not going to communicate with me. He's going to problem solve now. So he's empowered. So that's how you create freedom. What's your typical workday look like in the summer? Um, I generally do eight to like 5 p.m. But if the opportunity is there in early in the spring, I'll do eight to eight because there's so much like sales stuff going on. And I want to do a lot of production early on. Right. Yeah. So early on in the season, I'm putting in big days. Yeah. And then um, it kind of weans off as the summer starts. And then it becomes that eight to five type situation. I make sure I play softballs on Wednesdays. I make sure my weekends are off. Yeah, you know, but but I do take advantage of the early spring slash summer, and I will put in some hours during that time. Yeah, well, again, it goes back to getting when the getting's good. It's like it's why you go fishing for, or it's why you wake up early to go fishing because that's when the fishing's best. Versus like I'm gonna sleep in and do it when it's convenient. Like go fishing when the fish are biting. Go work when the jobs are being sold and the clients all want to book their paint job. It makes more sense. You will have more success putting your effort there rather than putting it in the dead of winter the week before Christmas or whatever. Right. Yep. Yeah. Great, man. Um, All right. So uh, going back a little bit, um, I don't know how much, you know, you want to share around some of the past and how you kind of got into the painting business, but I definitely think it'd be relevant to share a little bit about how, like how long you were in this industry, what prompt and what prompted you to start your business? Why did you finally start it? And what, what would you say to anybody else who's been in that spot, maybe considering starting their business for a few years? What was holding you up? You know, why did you eventually do it? So let's start at how long you were in this industry and what you were doing kind of leading up to 2020 when you started Straight Line. All right. Um, I think we got to go back further because, you know, there's certain life experiences that that um, I think made me want to be a business owner. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I think part of it is, is my whole family was entrepreneurial, but entrepreneurial in a sense that they're all independent operators, like sole proprietors, right? So they're not operating the way we are necessarily. And I always, when I was a young child, I saw that because my mom was, um, she was a, a business owner uh, and, uh, you know, she did custom window treatments or whatever. And so she, she basically was kind of like the painters are, they're the subcontractors for the contractor. Right. So my mom was the subcontractor. She was the one that produced the work. Um, and I always saw her working hours and hours and hours, you know, so, but she, she did it for the freedom, which for her was the flexibility because she had a big family, a lot of kids. And so she was able to kind of like have control over her production and her work in a way, but what it led to was long hours. Yeah. Um, because she never really seeked out you know, business coaching or anything like that. And, um, and not great profits. Right. Um, so that I think is partly why I became a business owner is because I always had this, like this desire to figure it out. I was like, I, when I was a kid, I was always sitting there asking my mom, like, so why don't you do this? Why don't you hire someone? Why don't you do that? And she was just like, excuse after excuse after excuse. Yeah. And I was just like, man, you know, like, screw that. You know, I wouldn't want to do that that way. So that's, that's part of it. Right. So then I went into the, so basically I, I was in high school and, um, I was, I was the type of person that, that well, I wasn't like a, a studious person. I was more of just a active, uh, you know, athlete like type dude who wanted to just go out and play outside all the time and all this kind of stuff. Um, you know, ninth grade, I got cut from the baseball team and that was like, after that I gave up on sports. Right. But later on in high school, I had, um, I think someone got injured. Actually, my brother got injured. My brother was a wrestler and he got injured and the team came to me. One of my, one of my buddies was on the team with them and they came to me and they were like, dude, 
we want you on the wrestling team, man. We need you. Your brother's injured. We need someone for that weight class, blah, blah, blah. And I was like, all right. Well, actually, no, I did. I was like, I said no for a long time, you know, months. I said no for the, to them. Finally, they just kept asking me. And finally, I was like, all right, I'll do it. Let's do it, man. I, I got nothing else going on. I, I haven't played baseball since ninth grade, blah, blah, blah. This is senior year, by the way. And so I went and um, I basically told the coach when I got there, I was like, dude, I have been smoking cigarettes and partying my ass off since I quit baseball. But they, for whatever reason, they saw something in me. And so I was just like, dude, I will commit fully to you and do whatever you say to help me, you know, be successful at this. And so that's what, that's what I did. And um, I ended up having a really good year. I, I basically was like a takedown away from going to state. I should have went to state, but um, I had a phenomenal year, my senior year. And uh, that really helped the team, blah, blah, blah. But that gave me the confidence <laughs> and almost arrogance, right? Um, to kind of like feel like I could do anything um, when I when I when I did that. Um, so after that season, um, my parents, for whatever reason, I went back to partying again. You know, the season was was over. For whatever reason. Yeah, it, you know, we went back to these old habits, right? <laughs> the season was over, and I um I reverted back, and I was I was partying again, blah blah blah, and. That summer, right after senior year, my dad was finally like, I had I had come home a, new, a number of times, like bloodied up from fights or this or that. But one time I was like slumped over the sink. My hand was bloody. I'd gotten in a fight somehow. Or I don't know what happened. But my parents finally were like, look, man, you can't live here anymore. Like you need to figure figure out your life, like blah, blah, blah. And I just, I think somewhere along the line, I, I told my dad, I was like, you know what? Fine. I'm going to go into the Marines or some shit. And my dad was like, whatever. You, you ain't going to do that. You always say you're going to do stuff and, and you're not, you're not going to do it, whatever. And so that made me be like, nah, I'm, I'm doing this. Like, no way are you going to tell me I can't do something right, whatever. And so I committed to the Marine Corps and I went to the Marine Corps. And um, when I went to the Marine Corps, it was kind of the same story as the wrestling. Like, hey, whatever I need to do, let's do this so that I, I can be successful. Um, and I, I did, I went to the Marine Corps, I went to boot camp, and um, I ended up getting company high PF tier, which is like coveted in Marine Corps boot camp. That's what you go. That's what you're yearning for is, is that company high physical fitness performance test, right? Which is like, you're, you're kind of competing over like 300 people and I won. It. And then, um, and then you're also trying to get company guide. Um, I didn't get guide. I was, a, I was a squad leader, but I got my, my physical fitness, um, award right right and that was really cool and that gave me the confidence again and so i kind of had my marine corps career like that and i i always kind of had this personality to kind of take charge whatever but so i went into the marines finished the marines um after the marines i went in combat in the marines just before i got out and um, i needed something real flexible and that's how i got into painting not to mention my experience with my mom being an entrepreneur blah 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 but more so it was about I needed something that was really flexible. And at that time it was just like, Hey, someone hire me um, as a painter as for a cash job. So that I didn't have to have all the structure in my life. Like the Marines had was, you know, had all over me. I just stress. I think, you know, there's some PTSD there, whatever. Yeah. And um, so I, I worked with a buddy who, who ran his painting company and he, I saw him kind of making money, but he wasn't running it properly. He was kind of making cash, all this and that. And he kind of like started getting arrogant with it, but he kind of, took his freedom to the extreme, which is then he didn't have sales and jobs come in and he wasn't able to keep me busy. I was a, I was an employee, not really, yeah. but I was making cash, but I wasn't a subcontractor. I didn't get 1099. So I needed to stay busy, right? I didn't have anyone else to, to stay busy with. So he got slow after two years of working with him. And then I was like, shit, I got to do something. So I went out and just hopped into it and I started my own company and it was called Straight Line House Painting. It had a when different logo that? and everything. When, when was that? When was, was this? That? Oh, this was in um, like 2005 ish, 2006. All right, wow. All right. So we got, yeah, that's a while, while back. So what, yeah. Yeah, I got out of the Marine Corps in 2004. Okay. And in 2005, 2006, I worked with my buddy as a painter. What yeah. happened was, is he, he broke his back during the summer. And he was like, dude, we got like these houses that we need to finish. And you're my only guy. Like, you need to finish these. And I had just been working with him for like a couple months. Yeah. And I was like, I got it, man. What's up? Just tell me what to do. And I would just get on the phone with him and he'd tell me what to do. And 
I'd go out there and, and paint and spray the houses, talk to the customers, collect the payment, you name it, right? I was doing everything. Well, then after that, he couldn't keep me busy. And I just went out and started my own business. And I just kind of used my like confidence to, to get jobs. Like, yeah, I can do this. No problem. This is, this is not a problem. Blah, blah, blah. I was kind of bullshitting <laughs> customers, right? Yeah. And so I'd win jobs, but I was not pricing them out correctly by no means, yeah. right? And what, what ended up happening was the recession came in, you know, 2007, 2008, whatever. And um, I wasn't able to stay busy. Like I couldn't win jobs for the life of me, right? For whatever reason. And um, so I, I took a contract job working on helicopters out in California because that's what I did in the Marine Corps. And uh, working on the same base that I used to when I was in the Marines, decent paying job at, at that age, at that time. Um, but I did that because I was, I wasn't able to pay my house bills. Like I had, I, as soon as I started my company back then, you were just able to state an income. And I just didn't know how much I made because I didn't track my numbers. So I was like, yeah, I make, you know, 80 grand or whatever. And so they gave me a loan, man. And um, I couldn't afford it when, when, when things got tough. Not only that, but I didn't have the business savvy to understand how to weather you know, weather a recession like that. And so I basically was going into foreclosure and I, I heard that they were like taking two years to foreclose on houses. And so I ended up going out to, to work in California and save that money up while I rented out my house. And I ended up saving up like 20 grand in cash. And like, that was my down payment on my new home when my house actually got foreclosed on. So kind of like a st strategic foreclosure, right? I'm like, yes, I'm committed to foreclosing. I'm going to go save some money and, you know, try to weather this. So you take this helicopter. So you take this helicopter job out in California, and then at some point, didn't you work into um, into role with Sherwin Williams? Is that what you ended up doing before you transitioned to starting your company? Yeah. So I, okay. you know, when I got back, I um, I said to myself out there, I was like, no, I'm not taking another contract. I need I need my college degree to to, to understand business so that I can actually run a business and weather a recession. And after I went. I came back, I got my degree. So I spent four gotcha. years kind of like getting my degree because that's what I needed. Yeah. And, uh, and then I went to Sherwin Williams and worked in store management for like three years or so. And then in 2029 um, or 2019, excuse me, I decided after I'd seen like this, this, what, what, what these other painting companies were, you know, yeah. the success that they're having, I decided to go and quit Sherwin Williams and start my business. Um, in 2020. Yeah. Yep. So was that all, was that kind of all the plan once you decided it, once you came back from the helicopter job and you got the degree and then worked at Sherwin, was that all part of the plan leading up to like starting your business again? Or You know, it's funny you ask that because um, subconsciously it was like, yeah. when I was going through, through this, um, I, I had, I had in the back of my head that I wanted to, to, I wanted this to be successful. Yeah. Didn't quite know how yet. Yeah. Um, but I knew that that was, that was my end goal. And, um, so obviously while I'm working at Sherwin Williams, I'm feeding my managers bullshit, but in the back of my mind, I knew that I wasn't going to be there forever. Right. Yeah. And, um, and so, yes, it was part of the plan and, um, all of those experiences kind of leading up to it. Um, were things that I took on so that I could learn more so that I could eventually get back here. Yeah. And that's why I went and worked at Sherwin Williams was so I could learn the industry, like all the, all the sub markets, um, just that side of the business. Like it, it was, it was extremely valuable for me, um, to learn that. And, um, also just how they operate. It gives me the ability to, um, be really efficient in production and understand how ordering works and pricing and all that kind of stuff, but not even pricing more. So the, um, the operating, you know, side of things. Yeah. Well, and, and knowing what you know now, Ryan, so now that you're where you're at with your business, I think there's two, two points I'd be curious to hear from you about. One is what you would say to people who have worked in the painting industry, whether it's, I worked at a painting company I worked at a paint supplier. I work, but like I've been around the industry and want to start their business. Um, I don't know what, what insight or what advice would you have to share with someone who's from that background? Like you were, they just have to understand what's possible out there. Um, you know, and that's what inspires you. Like you have to have an open mind in, in, 
you know, realize that there are, there, there's just, there's things that are possible that you just don't, you don't know that you don't realize because you just don't know. It's also one of those, what, what, what else they should know is like, it's better. <laughs> Life is better as an entrepreneur. Life is better as an owner. Life is better as a non-employee, in my opinion. Um, life is better when you have more control, more freedom. It's better when you're always able to learn and learn what you want. Like when I was in, in any kind of large organization, um, you know, the Marines, uh, Sherwin Williams, like I took a lot out of it, but I wasn't able to learn the, the stuff that I wanted to learn. I wasn't able to learn at the pace that I wanted to learn because it's controlled for their goals, not mine. Yeah. And so that is the, the, the thing. It's like, that's what I would, I would say that I would want them to know is like, you know, figure out what your goals are in life because that is the direction you're going to go. And like, I'm not sitting here, I'm not interested in, in other people's goals. And that's why I'm not interested in working in large organizations. I'm interested in my goals and what I, why, what I, what I'm passionate about and what I want to pursue in life. So the second, second, that's beautiful. And the second question is, and it's not really a question, but if some, someone who's in the painting industry, I, th I think you probably experienced this too, is like the lack of confidence, the uncertainty, the like, man, can I do this? Like not knowing if I can do it, et cetera. Like knowing what you know now, what would you say to someone who's thinking, thinking that today? They've got yeah, I, 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 I go through that or I went through that a lot and I probably still do at times because I'm going to continue to grow. Right. And it's just different stages. I've got to get past this next stage. Right. But I know all about that. Um, you know, the, the lack of confidence is like, I, I, that's why I got into coaching, man. Like, you know, it, you can do it, whether you're going to partner with someone or you're going to get a coach or you're going to, um, you know, I don't know, but like I, what I needed was I needed some, like, I needed some affirmation from people. I needed some people to be like, you know, yeah, that's, that's, that's legit. And that's tough, but this is what you, this is what's possible. This is what you can do. And here's how you do it. What would you say? What would you say to you from 2018? The you now talking to 2018, Ryan, I would say, just do it, bro. I would say, commit. And I would say, I would say, set aside your fears and go after it. And because then I, if you execute, I'm, you're going you're gonna to do it. I'm 2018, Ryan. And I'm like, dude, but I don't know if I can do it. I'm not sure if blah, blah, blah. What do you know now that you would say to me in my own doubts? My doubts back then were nobody's a better painter than me. And if I hire someone, they're going to screw up. Guess what? There's a lot of better painters than me and they're working for me now. And, um, and that's just bullshit. Yeah. That's bullshit because, um, you know, I, I'm proof, man. Like all these other people that I, I see in the industry are proof. All, the, all these other people that I'm connected to. So, you know, that's that's the biggest one for, for, for someone getting into the painting industry. I think that's the biggest one for everybody in the painting industry is they don't think that there's good painters out there. They don't yeah. think that there's good workers out there. So that's number one. By um, the way, isn't that funny how many people – in the country you think they're like the best painter there's there's like a there's like ten thousand best painters in the country that no one's better than yeah it's <laughs> crazy, there's like man. how many painters are out there it's like really you think you're well, really the best one <laughs> yeah and you can see that in in social media get into the comments get into oh. all the like the groups and you can see that and you've got to be smart man don't get don't get trapped into this uh typing these comments to try to be smarter than all these people and like argue back and forth just don't argue with people who are ignorant. There's no point, man. Just keep yeah. keep moving, keep learning. And uh, yeah, but you put your blinders on like that. But all right. So on the advice to anyone else, any any other thing you would say to people who are in the industry and wanting, like they do have a desire to start their own business, but they're scared or nervous. Any other uh, words of wisdom? It's tough, right? It ain't easy you know, you have every right to be scared. It's, it's, it's real, right? Um, everybody's in a different circumstance when it comes to their finances and their living situation. And um, not everybody has like the, the luxury that maybe I had, which was, you know, a, a girlfriend at the time that was, you know, 
helping me pay the bills or paying the bills while I was going to school or while I was trying to focus on something to kind of get this launched, right? Not everybody has that. There's other ways to do it though, right? You, you don't have to just drop everything and get into it. You can slowly get into it and, you know, slowly use those profits to, to grow that company and then eventually get to a certain point where you drop your job and you, and you now are full time and a partner or a business coach can, can show you that and teach you that and show you the numbers on where you need to be to give you the confidence, right? That's what gives me the confidence is, you know, me being in a coaching program, it's the, the things that I, I like find most valuable is like the time management that I learned and how to manage my time, a system, and then being structured in that way. And then setting aside time to be spontaneous, which, cause I'm very spontaneous. I need that. And then learning how to track numbers. That was, that's like most important, right? Is like, that's what has allowed me to have peace of mind and success. Like I wouldn't know where I am right now if I didn't know how to track my numbers and I didn't have the tools to track my numbers. And I didn't have the support to teach me how to understand those numbers, right? So tracking your numbers and learning that is, is so big because it gives, gives me the, the confidence now and the peace of mind and it, it shows me, that's what gives me the confidence, just yeah. seeing those numbers. Um, I'm curious, right? You know, when you said it's tough at the beginning, I said, what else would you say? You said it, it's tough. In what ways was it tough for you? Um, well, first starting out, like, you worry about, like, if you're going to fail. And if it's not going to work out and what people are going to think about you. You know, um, it's tough in a way also that uh, you're, you're, you're running into a lot of things that you don't know how to handle because you don't have experience. And so that is, is where my community and my coaching comes into play. When I run into that kind of stuff, I am able to reach out or put a comment somewhere or something and everybody's willing to share and give their experiences or how they're, how they do it or how they got through it. And guess what? All of a sudden I have this confidence to deal with this problem with this customer or this problem with this painter or this problem with this or that, whatever. Um, yeah, I mean, there's more things that are just tough. It's just, it's, it's not easy. Like you're, you're putting in a lot of time early on because you don't, you haven't learned your time management system. Well, you're still learning how to execute that and you're still getting better at that. And it's really the, the truth is, is it never ends. Like you're always, you've always got to learn how to get better at that. But that's, that's tough is, is like, there's a lot to learn and that's what makes it tough, but it also makes it exciting. You know, and also that's what makes you not get bored. And it also, that's what makes it inspiring. You start, you know, you start learning this stuff and it's really hard at first, but once you grasp it, it's amazing how easy your job gets. So like my job now, this is going to be my fifth year in, is so much easier than those first few years. It's so much easier because I've been able to develop personally and professionally. And then I've also been able to develop my systems and tweak them and make them better and better and better and better, yeah. which makes my job easier. And then, then it, and then it gives me more freedom, more time because I'm, I'm continually improving. It's a pretty amazing thing, you know, how it's, how the the more time passes, the easier it gets, the more money you make and the more freedom you have. And it's not like that much time has passed. No, 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 no. It hasn't been a lot of time at all, right? Four years ago, um, that's not a lot of time at all. And remember, four years ago, shit, I left Sherwin-Williams making 55 grand. You know, now I'm at 135. So, yeah, and it's not going backwards. No, and life's getting easier. Right. Like, less stress. There's no three month paid vacation at Sherwin Williams. No offense, Sherwin. No. We appreciate you. And, and I know how to handle, um, like, disappointment better. Yeah. Because you go through a lot of that as a business owner, but you learn, you know, as a, as a, as a business owner, as an entrepreneur, there's a certain mindset you you must take in order to be successful. And you start to learn that. I haven't even like that that book that you always recommend, um, what's it called? Um Thinking Fast uh, and Slow. 
No ownership. Uh, where you extreme take ownership. Extreme ownership. Extreme ownership. Oh, I haven't I read that. I haven't read that one. Good title though. Okay, good. Well, I've 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 learned the fundamentals through other people, right? Yeah. Of extreme ownership. And um, you're just able to take that mindset and deal with, um, you know, deal with like setbacks and breakdowns and like disappointments and all this kind of stuff with no problem because you, you understand the mindset that, that you need to take from it for it. Yeah. What do you think has had you be successful in the last four years? Why did you, you know, it's a good, I mean, it's really amazing four years. Basically you had freedom from the beginning, right? Once you quit painting, it's like you had the freedom of schedule, the freedom of time, income's gotten better every year. Revenue has been going up. You're, you've got more freedom, more ease of what you do, and you're still just like getting started. So it's been like a really good four years too. What did you do? What did you do right? Because that's not how it is for most people who start a business. What I what what I did was I I set my ego aside and I said I need help, and I reached out to 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 a coach, you know, yeah. and then I also decided to reach out to other people in that community and other communities online. I learned how to track numbers through that. That That's what made me successful. Like I'm not going to be successful without understanding my numbers. That was one of my main goals getting into it was I need to understand my, my numbers. Cause I, I didn't know how much I was making each year. And so I didn't, I felt unsettled and yeah. stressed and anxious about it. And so now I know how to track my numbers. I know my KPIs. I know what, I know what kind of adjustments to make. I'm still learning on that, but I, I know the basics now. Right. And that is what you need to be successful. You need, you need help and support. You need to understand your numbers. Um, you need a community. You need to set your ego aside and be, and, and have humility. Um, you need to be committed fully committed to your goals fully. If you want to achieve them. All in, all in. You can't be wishy-washy about it. That is, that's number one. It's all in, full commitment. Follow-up question. Yeah. So that was not a, for anyone listening, that wasn't a tee-up uh, question. Come on, Ryan. Why were you successful? Come on. <laughs> that was not what that was. But uh, I, I would, I mean, I'm all, I'm all, I have coaches all over the place. I spend tons of money on coaches and invest a lot of time in coaches. There's a lot of coaches out there. There's a ton of resources out there. I couldn't agree more that you should take advantage of the amazing resources and people that exist. And it's not just me. There's lots. Take advantage of them. So I agree with that. Follow up. The follow up question is this. Not everyone who gets a coach is successful. So what did you do? Because you did do something different than other people. It's not just, you know, you don't just, how did you utilize coaches? How did you utilize communities? How did you utilize support from other people? Like what did you, because you've been around long enough to see that like, Hey, there's a lot of people who don't, you know, they, they just paying for a coach doesn't get you there. Um, and I know a little bit about it, but I'm curious from your view, what made you successful utilizing all the resources? Well, it goes back to that commitment. You have to be all in, right? Well, guess what? Early on, I was all in and I was committed. But the truth is, is I didn't execute on that. And I didn't, I, I it took me a little while to, to gain the habits, right? I mean, I think you can remember when I first got in, it was like, where's Ryan? Is he at the webinar? So I'd, I'd be, I'd be wishy-washy about, I'd come to him. I wouldn't, I'd come to him. I wouldn't, I still was like, re like reverting to my old habits, which is just not doing what I say I was going to do, Right. So there's certain things that you have to prioritize, like getting better at and learning. And that, like, one of the things for me was, is like, uh, being reliable. Like I always had pride in being reliable and I thought I was reliable, but the truth is, is I really wasn't because I didn't have a system that allowed me to be reliable. You know, the difference is, is that the person who is all in and fully committed is going to you know, they're going to try to find the things that are priority that need to be learned and executed so that they can be successful. 
that's the difference. It's, 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 it's someone who is fully committed and all in. And, um, and so that's the approach that I took is like, I need to start setting aside time to learn so that I can execute and be fully committed to do that. It's pretty simple. I mean, it's pretty straightforward. I mean, I think it probably occurs to you that way that it's like, what do you mean? Like get help, use the help. Good things happen. Yeah. It's more valuable for me to set aside time to learn than it is to go run around and try to do shit. Yeah. But part of that commitment has to be, then I have to like take what I learn and start taking action. It's good, man. Um, any, any last, any last, any last words, any last, any last, any last words? Um, no, man, I, I just, I'm grateful for, uh, you know, all the support that I've had over the last few years from the community in my coaching program and all the people in social media, all the people like the, the, the painting industry is super awesome. Like there's so many people that are willing to share mm-hmm. and that's, what's really cool about it. Like you would think that the painting industry would be like, just not interesting, but man, I, am I learning a lot and where, you know, meeting a ton of great people and everybody is so open and transparent to share in this industry. And I think that that's what it sets this industry apart from a lot of different industries right now is that because it's not fully professionalized, like, like the tech industry or a lot of these other industries that are just like crazy huge and, and not even huge, but just like professionalized people see that. And so they just want to share like it. I don't, I don't, I don't feel like if I would have jumped into another industry that was like, you know, desire, I probably wouldn't have learned as much as I have over the past four years that I have being in the painting industry because of how much people are willing to share because people are passionate about making this industry professional. Now you're, you're, you're literally able to learn all kinds of free information that you probably wouldn't have, you know, if you're in a different industry because of the competition and just all that kind of stuff. All right, Brian, you're the man. Uh, thank you very much. And, uh, yeah, I appreciate you, dude. Cool. I appreciate you guys. Thanks, man. Hey guys, thanks for listening to the show. I hope you found it valuable. We make these episodes in the show for you, truly. So your feedback is super valuable to us, whether it's you know things you liked, things you didn't like, what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. Any feedback you can give us is going to be super helpful as we continue to evolve and improve the show over time. And if you want a copy of the Fast Growth Roadmap for Painting Contractors, which really simplifies the steps you take to building a business, um, we've got that resource for free for you. Just check the description or the bio where you're watching or listening to this episode and you can just click and download that for free and it should help give you a good roadmap for how to build and scale your business like the people that you're listening to on the show. So thanks for listening. We'll see you soon.